In what world do you need to put 60 rounds into a man who's unarmed and running away from you? Hey friends, this is Dr. Abdul Al Sayed. I want to talk to you today about the killing of Jalen Walker, an unarmed black man running away from police, being chased by several police officers who put 60 rounds into his body. That killing took place on the morning of Monday, June 27th. But Akron police, they didn't release the body cam footage until Sunday, July 3rd, the day before July 4th. I wanna walk through three things that you need to understand about the killing of Jalen Walker. The first is that his interaction with police started with a routine traffic stop. A routine traffic stop. Just like so many black men before him, he was killed over something that would have been a 60 or $100 ticket. Black people are far more likely to report having been stopped two or three times in the past five years than folks of other ethnic or racial categories. But here's the context I want you to understand about traffic stops. It's not just about the traffic stop. Oftentimes, it's unwritten policy in police departments to pull people over for routine traffic stops so that you can search them for something more. It's not just about the racial animus that has you pulling someone over. It's about what you suspect about what they're doing in the first place. Black drivers are 63% more likely to be pulled over, but they're 115% more likely to be searched after they've been pulled over. That's a matter of police department policy. The second thing you have to know about the killing of Jalen Walker is that he was shot 60 times, 60 times, despite being unarmed and running away from the police over a routine traffic stop. But look, it's not just Jalen. It's the fact that black folks are substantially more likely to be killed in interactions with police in the first place. What you're seeing here is the proportion of black folks in green as a proportion of the U.S. population. That's about 13%. But when it comes to all victims of police killings, they make up 31%. That's nearly three times the proportionality. But then when you look at the proportion who are killed while not attacking police officers like Jalen was, that jumps to 39% of all police killings in which the victim was not attacking police, 39%. So now you're talking about literally three times the proportion. What happened to Jalen is not an isolated incident. It is a function of a system that disproportionately kills young black unarmed men who are not attacking police at all. But here's the third thing I want you to understand about the killing of Jalen Walker. It didn't take the police from the 27th to the third to process body cam footage. It takes us a couple hours to process this video. They knew that if they could wait it out until the Sunday before July 4th, that they could bury it in the news cycle. They know that media don't really pay attention to much that happens on Sunday afternoons, let alone the Sunday afternoon before a national holiday. And so instead of, in a spirit of openness and transparency, releasing their footage as soon as they possibly could, they waited until the day in which they knew they would get the minimal possible news coverage. Now, folks like to make a lot of business about the media. They like to tell you that the media is not actually showing you an accurate depiction of what's happening around you. But here's the problem, is that the media is a set of institutions, and those institutions are interacting with other institutions, like police departments across the country. And so ask yourself, is it the media, or is it all of those other institutions that have an agenda here? Because if you are Akron police, and you know that you put 60 rounds into an unarmed black man who is running away from you, and you want to hide that story, you wait until the day before July 4th. And that's exactly what they did. When we talk about the challenge of mass incarceration, when we talk about the brokenness of our criminal legal system, it's easy to think about these big system solutions. But actually, a lot of it goes back to the goals of the people who make those institutions what it is. Openness and transparency are a choice. And it's clear here that Akron police were not acting with that goal in mind. To understand exactly how crazy what Akron police did, I want you to take a look at this next clip. It's a shooter. Yeah. That's Robert Crimo otherwise known as the Highland Park shooter. That's right, that's the guy who sprayed bullets on a July 4th parade, killing seven and injuring dozens more. 
He walked away with it with his life. Police apprehended him with a gun in his hand. They asked him to put his gun down. They asked him to get out of the car. And then they arrested him. He walked away with his life despite taking seven others. Jalen Walker, he didn't kill anybody. He didn't have a gun in his hand. And he got 60 bullets pumped into his body by Akron police. What's the difference? I'll let you decide. Hey friend, thank you for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and have more of your questions answered, click the subscribe button on this screen. And if you want to support me and want more content, I hope that you'll subscribe to The Incision, my newsletter. There, I reflect a bit further, go a bit deeper on some of these issues, and I interview some of the leading thinkers of this moment. The link to subscribe is on the screen here. See you soon.